welcome. This is for the Unit 4 uh, practice. I'm going to go over everything that's going to be on the test. Um, this looks very similar to your review, um, just has different numbers. Okay, so um, if you enjoyed this, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. If you want me to do this again sometime, I'm happy to if there's interest. Okay, so all right, so. I try to kind of have this in order. I think I kind of put something a little out of the order for our uh, unit. Um, but the first thing we covered was um, function notation. All right. So we can write anything in function notation. Function notation means you have the your like output variable, and this would be your input variable. So this is what we would put into our equation and this is what we get out of it. Okay, so we kind of talked about a function is something that has one input for every output, kind of like a um, vending machine or something like that. You put a dollar in, you get a candy bar out or something like that. So a function is just, just the same as that, except we're using numbers instead of coins and candy. Okay, so for this example, they're saying that h of x, so this is our function, h is the output, x is the input, f of x is equal to x squared plus 2. So this is our function. So if we had this little function box, we have our x squared um, plus 2, and we're going to put something into that function, and you're going to get something out. So here they tell us that what we're going to plug into this function is negative 1. So we'll put x equals negative 1 into this function and it will end up popping out h of negative 1 is equal to um, well we plug that in for x we get negative 1 squared plus 2 and remember negative 1 squared is the same as negative 1 times negative 1 which gives us a positive 1 so negative squared times a negative is a positive, plus 2, and it pops out 3. So this would be our solution. h of negative 1 is equal to 3. Okay. So again, it's just this is our function. We're going to put, in this example, we're going to put in negative 1 third for x and it's going to put out something else. So here we just want to plug that in, substitute that in for t. That would give us 5 halves times negative 1 third minus 1 sixth. All right, so if you want to do that using a calculator, that's fine. Um, I'm going to just remind you about how to uh, multiply fractions. So if you're multiplying two fractions, you just want to multiply the numerators, and then we want to multiply the denominators. So that would give us three or five times negative one gives us a negative five, divided by well two times three is six, and then we still have our minus one sixth. Okay, or maybe I'll do that happy that red minus one sixth. So that's still the same, and then to combine. To subtract or add fractions, the denominator has to be the same. So in this case, they are the same. So when you add or subtract fractions, all you do is the numerator. The denominator will stay the same, and that would give us negative 5 minus 1 gives you a negative 6 over 6, which is the same as a negative 1. Okay? So f, or I guess this is w this time, w of negative one-third is equal to negative one. So we just plug that in, that's what you plug into your function, and this is what you get out, is a negative one. All right, um, then we also did some other things with functions, adding or subtracting. So these are our functions. This is one function, this is another function, and they're called f of x is one of the functions, and g of x is the other function. So just remember, this is just the name of the function, and this is what is like the variable inside that function, what, what, what we're going to plug in. We're going to, 
our input is going to be an x, and the output is going to give us f. Okay? So here they want us to find f minus g of a, which is the same as f of a minus g of a. Okay, it's just a different way to write it. Just remind just remember, please, that we're not multiplying the functions by a. This is just telling us that that is the input variable. The input variable is a. Oh, sorry, this should be x. I tried to fix this up so that it was in x's instead of a's, and I guess I missed that one. Okay, so the input variable is x. Okay, so we're not multiplying everything by x. It's just telling us that's the, that's the input variable. So here we're going to do f of x, f of x, well that is x plus 2, and we're going to subtract g of x, okay? Whenever you're subtracting a function, you need to have a parenthesis. So we put in g of x, which is negative x squared minus 2x. Now remember, whenever we have subtraction, we're going to need to distribute that that's why we need to have that parenthesis. If we didn't have that parenthesis, then you wouldn't be distributing to the negative 2x. So here when we distribute, it will just change the sign. We'll still have x plus 2, but now we'll have a positive x squared and a positive 2x. All you have to do next are, is to combine like terms. So we'll start with the largest exponent, would be x squared. After that, we would have those that are just x. So x plus 2x gives us 3x. And then the last is the constant. It's by itself. So we'll just rewrite that down. And that would be our answer. Okay. Adding functions is even easier. We just need to um, combine them. Combine like terms. So g g of n, this is the same as g of n plus h of n. So g of n is just negative 6n minus 6, and then we're going to add that to 3n squared plus 2. And since you're adding them, you don't need to have uh, parentheses, okay? Because if you did have a parenthesis and you distributed that positive, it wouldn't change the signs at all. Okay, so it's just when you're subtracting. We combine like terms, highest first, so 3n squared. Next we have minus 6n, and then the constants, negative 6 plus 2, and that would give us a negative 4. Okay, so that was our first uh, lesson, was 4.1. All right, and I think this was supposed to be, I think this is like 6 point, or 4.6, where we, I don't know, or I can't remember when it was, maybe it was 4.4. Anyways, either way, we can do these problems, okay? So it says, write the slope-intercept form, okay, remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope, and b is your y-intercept. Okay, so we want to find the slope. Well, the slope, you just want to look for a spot where it looks nice and perfect. So, like, this looks like a big per perfect spot, and this looks like another perfect spot. Okay, kind of where it crosses like that is what we're looking for. And then we want to find the rise. So remember, slope is rise over run. Rise, here would have to go down to... So that'd be negative 3, and then would go over 2. So negative 3 halves. Okay? If you don't want to worry about those signs, let's just say, well, this is 3 and this is 2, and then you'd have to say that it has a negative slope, so it would make it easy, uh, negative. Okay? So either way, you'd be fine. All right, 6, they also want us to write it in slope-intercept form. So remember, if we want to find the slope-intercept form, all we need to do is solve for y. Okay? Let's make sure I had this. 
Oh, my bad. Okay. Um, hang on. Sorry. I think this is these these wording is wrong. So let's that's that's good to do it that way. Um, this is supposed to actually be instead of writing the slope intercept form, we're supposed to find the uh, x and y intercepts. Okay, so it says identify the x and y intercepts for the following. Write the intercepts in order pairs. So we want to write it like x comma y. Okay, so I guess I had that wrong in the review or in the review, but this is what it's going to ask you for. Um, probably on the test. So let's look at this. So here, this isn't a perfect example, but if you want to find the y-intercept, it's where the line crosses the y-axis. So the y-intercept is going to be uh, 0, because the x-value here would be 0, and the y-value would be negative 2. For the x-intercept, for the x-intercept, y is always 0, so we look at this value for on the y-axis, this point would always be on this 0 value for our y-axis, and then for the x-value, it looks, let me see, I kind of need to clear that out, it looks kind of like a third-ish, I don't know, so maybe negative 1.3. Right, So it's not too bad coming up with the y and x-intercepts for a graph. Coming up with something like this sometimes is a little difficult. So um, one of our, what we talked about in our, our class, I think it was 4.2. You may want to look at your notes for that. If we want to find, if you want to find x-intercept, we set y equals 0 and solve for x. So if again we look at this graph, if we want to find the x-intercept, y is always going to be 0. So what we'll do is we'll su substitute 0 in for y. So I kind of would say something like x-intercept. Okay, that's what we want to find. We would say y equals 0 and would substitute that in so we'd have 4x minus 3, 0, times 0, equals 21. And that would cancel, and we would want to divide uh, both sides by 4. Okay, so our x value for our x-intercept is 21 fourths. So the, the point 0, or the x-intercept would be um, 21 fourths comma 0. And then similarly with the y-intercept, we say x is equal to 0. So we plug that in, 4 comma 0, or 4 times 0, minus 3 times y is equal to 21. That is just 0, so we need to divide both sides by negative 3 to get y by itself. So we get y equals negative 7. Okay, and then we'd write it as an ordered pair. It'd be 0, x is always 0 when you're doing the y-intercept, and then the y-value is negative 7. Okay? So that's what we're looking for using that type of problem. Okay? Sorry for that. And on your review, it probably is written the same way as, as that when it should be asking what for um, the x and y-intercepts. Okay? Um... Find the slope for each line. Okay, it's not too bad. Rise over run, remember. Rise over run. Okay, so rise would have to go down 3 and over 6. Okay, so that would be negative 3 over 6, which is the same as negative 1 half. Okay, and you wouldn't even have to use those same points. You could use this point and this point would give you negative 1 and 2, which gives you negative 1 over 2, which is the same thing. Okay, so this one, we want to find the slope again. m is equal to rise 
which is 2, and run, which is 4. So 2 over 4. Are those the same? They are the same slope. This one's negative. Probably should have looked at that a little better. So that'll be one half. Okay. All right. Now they want us to find the slope using points. So you may need to remember for the test that for points, the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay. Um, where you could say this would be x1 and y1 and x2 and y2. All right, so we're just going to do 11. We use y2 is 11 minus 17. We're subtracting those two, and then we're going to divide it by negative 2 minus 8. Okay, 11 minus 17 gives you negative 6. And negative 2 minus 8 gives you negative 10. And that can be simplified to give us well, the positive. And the negative and negative will make us positive. And 6 and 8, we could divide top and bottom by 2. And that would give us 3 fifths. Okay. And then this problem is the same sort of our same equation, it's just that instead of trying to find the slope, we're trying to find a point, a value of the point. Okay, so we'd use the same thing. Slope is equal to, we could say this be x1, and this could be y1, and x2, and y2. So we'd do y2 minus y1 divided by y, or x2 minus x1, okay? And then we'd want to simplify as much as we can, so the numer numerator, we can simplify. Negative and a negative gives you a positive. And so negative 3 plus 2 gives us a negative 1. So we have 1 third equals negative 1 over 2 minus x. And then to solve, we'd need to cross multiply. So that would give us negative 3 is equal to 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times a negative x gives you a negative x. Okay, and then we would want to get x by itself, isolate it, have it on one side. So you have choices to be made. You could subtract 2 from both sides. That gives us negative 5 is equal to negative x. But then we'd need to subtract or divide both sides by a negative 1 to get rid of those negatives. Okay? Because our answer should always, our variable should always be positive. So x should always be positive. And then this just so happens that our number is also positive. Okay? So x equals 5. Sketch the graph. All right? So you're going to have problems like this too where... We want to use our intercepts to find our graph or draw our graph. So x-intercept value is negative 5, which would be right here. And the y-intercept would be negative 3. And then you maybe want to have, do your best to try and make a straight line. Something like this. I don't know. Okay. You can also continue that if you do kind of rise over run, you could continue that over. So you could do down 3 over 5, down 3 over 5, okay? All right, and then here's another one. This is in slope-intercept form. So this would be your slope, and this would be your intercept. So intercept would be negative 4, and it has a rise of 4 and over 1. Rise of 4 over 1. Okay, something like that. And then here, we want to graph x equals 5. All right, so no matter what y is, x is always 5. So here's x equals 5. That point would be 5, but every y value is also, is also 5. So 
would be a vertical line. If it was y equals, say, 2, then we would have a line that has a slope of 0 and goes through the y-intercept of 2. Write the slope-intercept form for the equation. Okay, this is what I think I was meaning to do. Uh, this was kind of like, uh, which one that we did that was wrong? 5, this is the one that we were supposed to be doing. So for 14, we want to write it in y equals mx plus b. Okay, so our y-intercept is 1. So b is 1. And we want to find m, which is a slope. So we'd want to find another point. So we'd have to go down 3 over 2. Down 3 over 2. That would be our rise over run. All right, so we'll put that in our equation. y equals negative 3 halves x plus 1 would give us our equation. Okay, write the standard form of the equation of each line. Okay, so these are in slope-intercept form. We want to write it in standard form. So remember, standard form is something like ax plus by equals c. So we want the x and y to be on the left side. A, B, and C have to be whole numbers, so no fractions or decimals. And X has to be positive. So keep that in mind. You may want to write those three things um, so you can remember or to study. It's also on your notes. Okay, so here we'd want to get X and Y on the same side. So we'd subtract 3X from both sides. So we get negative 3x plus y is equal to 6. And then, again, we don't want to have negative x's, so we need to divide everything by a negative 1. So we get 3x minus y equals negative 6. Similarly with 6, okay, we want to get... Um, x and y on one side, so we could add one fourth x to both sides. So I have one fourth x uh, plus y uh, is, equals a negative five, and then we don't want fractions, so we'd need to multiply everything by the denominator. So we need to multiply both sides by four. So 4 times 1 fourth gives you 1, so we get x, and then 4 times y gives us 4y. So remember, you have to distribute whenever you have a parenthesis like that. Equals, and here, when we multiply, we would get negative 20. It says, write the slope-intercept form of the equation of the line. So here they give it in standard form, we want to write it in slope-intercept. So remember, slope-intercept, all you have to do is solve for y. So we need to subtract 5x from both sides. We get negative 7y is equal to negative 5x minus 7. And then we need to get y by itself, so we need to get rid of this negative 7. So remember, these are being multiplied. So we'd have to do the opposite. We'd need to divide by negative 7. Okay. So we'd end up getting y equals negative 5 divided by negative 7. Well, the negatives would cancel and would leave us with 5 sevenths x. And then negative 7 divided by negative 7 gives us a positive 1. Okay. So that's that, and then we have a couple of word problems. So I try to come up with these just barely. Hopefully I don't have any mistakes. It says, Greg has $24. During Black Friday, a Hulu prescription costs $3 per month. Oops, per month, year. I see, found a mistake. Per month. Greg loves documentaries, so he subscribed. We want to write an equation to model the situation. So again, we want to find... We want to find slope, and we want to find the y-intercept. So the slope, we want to find something that maybe says per, per month, dollars per month, or something like that. So that would be our slope. And since he ha it costs that much, he's going to lose money. So it would be a negative 3 
dollars per month. And then the Y intercept would be his initial savings. So that would be 40 or 24 dollars. So for our equation, we'd have y equals mx plus b. So ask, what is the y-intercept? So the y-intercept would be the initial cost. So at time equals 0, he'd have $24. And you'd want to interpret that and say that in, in uh, write that down. So Greg had... Or initially, initially, Greg had twenty-four dollars. Okay, and then the x-intercept. Okay, so if we have a graph, we can always come up with an example. He started with twenty-four, and he's going to spend money as time goes on until he has no dollars left. Okay, this would be our y-intercept or our x-intercept. And we're going to want to find that. And on our first page, um, it asked, what is the x-intercept? What's the y-intercept? And remember, if we want to find the x-intercept, we just set y equal to 0. So we do 0 is equal to negative 3x plus 24. Subtract 24 from both sides. So we get negative 24 is equal to negative 3x. And then we need to divide both sides by negative 3 to get x by itself. So that would end up giving us x is equal to 8. So 8 months. Okay, so that would be the x-intercept value. So it would have 8 comma 0. And how we would interpret that would say after, after 8 months, Greg is out of money or something like that. Okay, um, and then it says, how much money do you have left after five weeks? So five weeks, remember weeks is our, um, our x, so this is our, our uh, weeks, our time is always x, so we'd want to substitute that into our equation. So y is equal to, it was what? negative 3 times 5 weeks uh, plus 24. Okay, and that would give us uh, negative 15 plus 24, and that would end up giving us 9. So he'd have nine, $9 left. After 5 weeks. Okay, so here's another example. Okay, Sarah wants to save up for a new camera. She has $40, and she works at Denny's making $8 an hour. So we want to write an equation to model this. So y equals our slope. This is how much she gets per hour. An hour, okay, so that would be 8 times the number of hours she worked. And then she already has $40. So what's the y-intercept? That would be 0, 40. And how would we interpret that? would say initially she has $40. And the x-intercept would need to calculate that. Remember, if we want to find the x-intercept, y is 0. So we would substitute 0 in for y. And we'd need to solve. So we'd subtract 40 from both sides. Remember, we do opposite of PEMDAS. So we addition and subtraction first. So we'd get negative 40 is equals 8x. And then we'd divide both sides by 8 to get x by itself. And we'd end up getting x equals negative 5. So the x-intercept would be negative 5, comma, 0. And the reason why I didn't write uh, interpret it is that that would be back in time. Um, five hours. Okay, so we're starting from the initial point. We don't really look back. Okay, we don't go back in time. We're just projecting to the future. So we wouldn't need to write down uh, 
uh, interpret part, okay? Because it doesn't really make sense. All right, so how many hours does Sarah have to work to buy a $200 camera? All right, so remember Y is the money she has. Okay, so if we had some sort of graph, this would be money. And again, X is time. So, so Y is money and X is time. So we've set Y equal to 200. And then she gets $8 an hour. And she already has 40. So then we'd solve to see how many hours she needs to work to get the total amount. So we'd subtract 40 from both sides. So that would be 160 equals 8x. And then we'd divide both sides by 8. And we'd get 20 is equal to x. So it would take her 20 hours to have enough money to buy her camera. Okay. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, the test is going to be very similar to this. Um, make sure on the review, I would try and do five and six with the question or the what the prompt is. So we want to find x and y intercepts. Okay. And we'll probably go over that on Tuesday before the test just to make sure you're good with that. Okay, all right, we'll see you later.